In this part, we're going to talk about resistors, the different types, how to measure them, what they look like, generally just give you a little bit of an overview. Now, I realize this is a simple subject and people that have been in electronics for any time at all already understand resistors, but some of these, particularly some of the vintage resistors, may be new to you. So even if you've been at this for a while, I hope there's something in this that will uh, uh, give you something to think about or something you didn't know before. Back in the day, most resistors were made with carbon. Now I say most, there were also a lot of wire wound resistors, and we'll talk about those in a second. But this, for example, is a 1K resistor. By 1K, we mean 1,000 ohms. Now, you'll notice that it has color bands on the resistor. This one is brown, black, orange, silver. The first three tell you the value of the resistor in ohms. Brown is 1, black is 0, and orange is, uh, well, I said orange, I think that's actually red. Yeah, that's red, because this is a 1K resistor. Red is two. So one, zero, and two more zeros. So a thousand ohms. And then the silver is the tolerance, and we'll talk about that again in a second. Modern resistors tend to be made of composition materials, and they look a little more like this. There we go. And once again, brown, black, red. Now, this one does not have the tolerance on the body. It has the tolerance down here, and notice it's gold. So once again, first three value, last band is uh, tolerance. Now, by tolerance, what we mean is plus or minus 5%, 10%, 20%, etc. It's not uncommon back in the day for there to be 20% resistors, which means a 100 ohm resistor could read anywhere from 80 to 120 ohms and still be within spec. One of the things that will help a little bit in identifying resistors is if you get a resistor color code. Now, here is a card that was published by Nightfire Electronics, but you can get these from vendors all over the place. You can even buy them, though if you order some resistors, a lot of places will just send you one of these. But you'll notice down at the bottom it has uh, a description of the color code and then a nice colorful chart there uh, that talks about what each color means and which band is related to. So first band, second band, third band, you see that across the top there. I recommend that in addition to one of these cards, until you learn, now people who are at this for a while, they kind of memorize this chart. So they can look at a resistor and read it right away, assuming they're not slightly colorblind like I am and, and have to get a magnifying glass to make sure they have the right color. But uh, at any rate, little color code chart like this. But I suggest that instead what you do is get a copy of Allied's Electronics Data Handbook. Now, this is a book published by Allied Electronics back in the day. I think they started publishing it in the 30s, and I know they were still publishing it in the uh, late 70s and maybe even into the 80s. You can download this, just go to Google and search for Allied's Electronics Data Handbook and you'll find, I think I found nine references to it, uh, at least six of which were PDF downloads. And in it, you will find things like the resistor color code, as well as all kinds of other things, capacitor color codes, uh, Transistor, well, that's ceramic capacitors. Uh, I said transistors. I meant transformers. Uh, how speakers are, were wired up back in the day. It's just a treasure trove of, of great electronics data. Now, unfortunately, 
This is not available on the, uh, as far as I could find, on the uh, Radio History, American Radio History website. But a book that is available there is called Reference Data for Radio Engineers. And it also has things like resistor color codes and other lots of information. This book will overwhelm you with its technical data. And it is a book that was published back in the day by International Telephone and Telegraph. You, uh, some people used to call it ITT. It was sort of the reference Bible for radio engineers. And by that I mean from the 30s through the uh, 60s and 70s. If you were dealing with radio, this was the book to get. The, uh, so let's come back to resistors again. In addition to the standard resistors, and by the way, there is a fourth factor. Remember we talked about the value, we talked about the tolerance, and we talked about the type, uh, composition versus carbon and, or wire wound and so on. There is another factor called wattage, which is how much power that the resistor can dissipate. And generally, if you get into uh, values much over about 2 watts, uh, most resistors come in quarter watt, some even in eighth watt. They're very tiny. Uh, half watt is a common size. One watt is a common size, and two watts in the cylindrical. Generally, if you get above two watts, you go to resistors like this. Now, this is a five watt. Let me get the. See if I can get it to. There we go. Five watt. Uh, 500 ohm resistor, power resistor. These are sometimes called sand resistors because if you can see in there, there's this is uh, a, a type of uh, sand glued together to provide uh, heat sink capacity. They also make that same type of resistor with these little mounting tabs that allow you to mount it down to a piece of metal whether that's the chassis or a heat sink or whatever, so that it can dissipate even more heat. Now, while we're talking about wire-wound resistors, which these generally are, they also used to make adjustable wire-wound resistors that looked a bit like this. If you see these, I suggest that you uh, at least clean them if you find them. They tend to corrode badly and the corrosion tends to occur under this little tab. So uh, if you loosen it up and uh, put some cleaner on it, get the inside cleaned, you'll find that a lot of the intermittents that are due to these resistors will go away. They also used to make uh, the same type that was tapped, where each uh, tab was a different resistance value. Generally, the symbol for this is as shown here. The symbol for an adjustable is shown here. You'll see in a second that's the same symbol as a potentiometer. And the symbol for an ordinary resistor is just this little squiggly uh, line. That's on a schematic. So what about these over here? Well, these are variable resistors called potentiometers. The center is what's called the slider and there is a resistance between the two outer terminals and then depending on where you set this rotatable shaft the center moves from in one direction all the way over here through all of the value of resistance to all the way over here so suppose this was a 1000 ohm resistor and you had it set right in the middle of its rotation. That would mean there'd be 500 ohms from this terminal to this terminal and 500 ohms from this terminal to this terminal. There's always a thousand ohms across these terminals, assuming it's a 1000 ohm resistor that is, or potentiometer. Now, there are two basic kinds of these potentiometers. They are generally called linear taper and 
in radios, they are called audio taper. Now there also is a third kind called logarithmic taper, which is similar to the audio, but not quite the same. They're used in instruments, but we won't talk about those since they generally weren't used in radios. But there are linear, and that by that I mean that as you rotate this, the resistance varies directly with the rotation. And then audio taper that were intended for volume control applications because the human ear is not sensitive to sound the same over the range. And so it was intended to cause the volume of a radio to vary with the ear's response, and they're called audio taper. This is a single. Here is a single potentiometer with a switch, usually used for turning the AC power on. Here is a ganged, a two-gang potentiometer. These were used where you needed uh, to have two resistors that tracked each other. For example, the volume in a stereo or something else of that sort. <clears throat> there also is a kind that are used, in, once again, more in instrumentation, called a 10-turn pot that you may see from time to time, though unlikely in a radio. So now let's talk about how we measure these, and uh, then we'll close all this up. Resistance is measured by using the ohms function of a multimeter. There are other ways to do it with bridges and so on, but we're going to focus on this because it's the lowest cost generally. And usually there are multiple ranges. Now we're going to talk about multimeters in a future uh, part, but for right now, to measure a resistor, you have to set the uh, multimeter to the resistance scale. And in the case of these old meters, you have to use, you, you have to set to a particular range. Now modern meters uh, generally auto range. And then you read the resistance on this top scale. Generally it's in green. Notice it says ohms over here on the right. And here, it, it's, uh, it also says ohms on the left. And then it has differing values that when you read that value, they then have to multiply by the multiplier down here. So for example, if I had it set to this middle resistance range, then everything you read at the top, you would multiply by 10. I suggest, and you'll see when we get to multimeters why I do this, that you buy an inexpensive digital multimeter for your resistance measurements, and actually for most of your measurements. You set this to the ohms scale, right there, and then you take the probes and put it across the resistor. Let me get it to focus a little bit like that. And you see that this reads 958 ohms, or 0.958K. Notice the little K over here on the side. In other words, this is a 958 ohm resistor marked as a 1K resistor. Once again, it has that brown, black, red color code. And the silver means it's a 10%. So that is how you identify and measure resistors in a modern, or I'm sorry, <laughs> in a vintage radio using a modern multimeter. Next time, we're probably going to talk about capacitors, and then eventually we'll get back to multimeters and other things of that sort. But for now, I would like to wrap this up. I think I'm finally going to finish under 15 minutes, and hope you'll look forward to another video, and have a nice day.